Hello guys, the PCBs for the Kickstarter controllers have just arrived and along with them a number of other PCBs that I was able to uh, get made up thanks to the uh, funding of the Kickstarter. So what I'm going to do today is take a little look at the PCBs that I've got. So here's the first PCB we're going to have a look at. This is a little PCB for the flasher unit design that i shown in a video a week or two ago. So all it is has is a 555 timer here and a couple of capacitors or well a capacitor and a couple of resistors to uh, give us a, a frequency that's around about the frequency uh, of warning beacons. This is a, a single sided PCB there's nothing on the rear side here well except the, the pads for the holes but there's uh, no copper on the rear. This will probably be the first little PCB I test out because I just have to solder on the 555 timer which should be pretty simple. And I think I'll put one of these in the CQ Control 32 Fent 930 to uh, give it warning beacons. I think it should be pretty easy using this. This is pretty much the circuit I used to do the flashing beacons when I was shown how to add warning beacons to a, a CQ Control 32 tractor. So we have our little tr a PMP transistor here and when we give it uh, power so we have say ground uh, a positive voltage and a signal in the middle and when we give the signal a positive voltage so we'll say we give it a one it turns on the warning beacons when we give it a zero the warning beacons are off so it's just switching on and off that transistor i was able to get these pcbs manufactured in a little panel here with uh, just v scoring to to separate them so you just uh, can snap apart the PCBs that you want so that's what that one was just snapped off. The next board is a design to go inside a tractor so it is basically like an Arduino so I'll show you here's a an Arduino Pro Mini so it's about the same size but while the Arduino just has the Atmega chip my little board here has the Atmega chip a little IO expander and the TB6612 FNG motor driver Another thing to note about mine, you can see the uh, holes on this are much smaller than they are on the other Ar on the Arduino. But you can see the the holes on the Arduino actually take up quite a bit of space, and I was trying to keep the same uh, dimensions as the Arduino, but kind of get more in the same space. So I had to go for the smaller pin spacing. An advantage of the smaller pin spacing is that the uh, the pin spacing now matches just common ribbon cable. So. I'm not sure if you can see that, but each wire there is exactly the right spacing to suit the uh, holes in the new PCB. Whereas um, before on the Arduino, you'd be spreading them out. Since every second wire would have fit into an Arduino there. Probably in the next video, you'll see me soldering up one of these. I'll have to, uh, well, I'm not sure how I'm going to program it because uh, it's not like I have a programmer for these. But I'll figure something out. And with any luck I'll be putting this in the Fent 936 model pretty quickly. That should be a fairly simple conversion. And then the next model I plan to put one in is the Ford TW35. Because the um, the IO expander chip means we can take full advantage of both channels of the TB6612 FNG motor driver here. And that means we can control our two uh, rear drive motors individually which is what we want to improve our steering on that model. Along this edge here you can see uh, that's the pinout for the SMD uh, NRF24 modules so it should be very easy to connect this to an NRF24 module and, and also this little board uh, should be very good in a trailer model as well so I plan to put one of these in the um, Kane silage trailer and have the NRF, well have an NRF24 module underneath it. I just want to do that as an example of how you can build your own trailer and use it with a Control32 model without needing to interface directly with the Control32 models. You could just use the the little basic Arduino controller, the Arduino uh, Uno controller that I've talked about before. You can just use that to control your trailer and you know all you want to do is tip and lower or raise and lower the trailer so you know it's not very complicated. But I'll be demonstrating that with the Kane Silage Trailer. So most of the components are on the front side. And on the back side we have voltage regulator and a couple of capacitors. Nothing too complicated on the back there. 
I am going to have to hand solder these components on which is going to be pretty tricky they're smaller than anything I've soldered before but uh, I'm pretty sure I should be able to do it obviously if I was to make these in a large enough quantity I'd be able to just get the parts picked and placed but um, I think you have to order quite a large quantity a couple of hundred of the boards to uh, do that so to prototype them out I'll do it with hand soldering and we'll see how they turn out you can see here a red cross through this PCB and that is because I got the dimensions well I didn't leave enough space around the boards um, for the V scoring so it's cut through the, the pads here and they've uh, marked that one as a bad board so that's a little suggestion if you're planning to get PCBs made make sure and leave plenty of space especially in the boards that you want uh, V scoring on and here's the final board that I got uh, manufactured along with the controller PCBs this is for an excavator and as you can see basically three Arduinos wide I think so roughly three Arduinos wide well Arduino Pro Mini's wide I mean so it's quite a bit bigger than the tractor board that I did but we do have uh, three TB6612 FNG motor drivers so that should be enough to control the boom and the tracks and the slewing everything there then we have our Admega and in order to control all these uh, chips we have two IO expander chips here so that should give us control of everything we have a few analog inputs over here as well so we should be able to uh, put potentiometers on the joints of your say excavator boom then you could read the value from the potentiometer using these so basically turn your excavator boom into one giant servo if you were using screw mechanisms obviously if you're using servos you don't need this then uh, you just use normal pro mini if you're using servos because you don't need any of the circuitry everything you'd need was here so this would be only if you're going to use screw drives I don't have enough uh, TB6612 FNG motor drivers so if uh, the tractor board here works then I'll uh, get a few more of these chips and um, make up at least one of these boards and that would hopefully well, I don't think I have too much left to do on the PC400 but I was kind of waiting for this board a lot of my tractors I've been waiting for, for these boards to kind of get uh, perfected so that I could um, well I just really wanted to use these designs in them so I was kind of waiting for a few of these for different things so those are the little PCBs that I'm going to be working on in the next couple of weeks so if you like these ideas make sure and hit the like button and if you have any comments or suggestions let me know in the forum or let me know below the video and that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching